Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here today to do kind of a combination of a get ready with me and favorites video. And I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Because my favorites this month were predominantly makeup, they were a lot of the things that I got from the Sephora sale. And I had a lot of requests to do the makeup look that I had on in my Sephora haul video. So I thought I would kind of combine those two. Also because I am gonna be doing in the month of December my favorites for the year and I just didn't want to get to where there was like four different favorites videos within a month. It's just too much. So this is kind of a responding to request video while also showing you some things that I have been loving in the month of November. I'm gonna start out with my complexion. My beloved Clinique Airbrush Concealer has been discontinued, which I use for my corrector. I have found another one that I am liking and it's coming up in a K-Beauty makeup video very soon. I went ahead and applied that because by the time I got on to the Chantecaille Black Friday sale to purchase my Stilo corrector that I love, so much it was sold out <laughs> so i'm gonna have to wait on that one as well but so far i'm liking this one from k beauty so i've already got that on and i'm going to use the hourglass veil hydrating skin tint which was the only foundation that i hauled during the sephora vib sale definitely not a new foundation in fact i really didn't think that i was even going to purchase this when it first came out but then i just kept hearing so many good things about it that i was like really is it really that good we must try it for ourselves. I got the shade number seven. So I'm gonna pull my hair back and get started on the look. It is a squeeze bottle. This is not my favorite way to have a foundation or skin tint product. I do know that if it's more of like a tinted moisturizer, it tends to be more of a squeeze bottle. But my issue with that is I don't have control over how much product I'm using and I usually end up squeezing out too much, which just wastes product. Whereas when I can figure out with a pump, you know, oh, you know, one to two pumps will fill my, fill, <laughs> cover my whole face. Then I don't end up applying too much, but you know what? It is what it is. So we're going to work with it. Now this is a hydrating product and I do think you'll be able to see from half my face that this half that I've already applied it is already a little bit more luminous than this half that just has skincare on it. I don't have any primer or anything like that. The color is great. I'm happy with number seven. And I would say the coverage is definitely light. It is a skin tint. I'm, I don't feel like I've been duped by marketing. <laughs> I mean, I know what I was expecting when I buy a skin tint. And it is sheer to light coverage, and that is what this gives. I personally do not think it gives anything more than a light coverage, at least not on my skin. To me, it's not overly buildable. We'll try to build it a little bit on this cheek once I've applied everything. But it's really more of like a skin evening product, just to even out the skin tone. Add some hydration if you need it, which to be fair, I typically don't. My skincare is pretty hydrating. I don't really look for that in my makeup products, but if you're someone who just can't get enough hydration, you know, something like this is gonna be good too. So I only used half of what I put on my hand, which again is why I tend to waste product with these types of tubes. But I don't know if it's gonna come across on camera, but I do still have some redness on this cheek. So I'm gonna to try to build it up a little bit, just on that area. It's not very buildable to me. What you get on like the first application is kind of what you get. I like this. I don't necessarily think it's like groundbreaking as far as a skin tint or foundation product goes, but I like it enough to have not returned it, to continue wearing it, but it's not breaking into my top five or anything like that. So just kind of a middle of the road product for me, but still good. And especially again, if you are someone who is really looking for hydration, as is relayed in the name of the product, it's definitely something to look into, especially if you're not wanting anything with more than a sheer to light coverage. Now I bought two concealers in the sale, the Tower 28, serum concealer and then the house labs concealer i like both of these i honestly had heard better things about the tower 28 than i had about the house labs however i prefer the house labs if i had to choose between the two i just think the house labs wears a little bit better on me 
but they are both good. I don't have any issues that stand out with the Tower 28. It wears well, it's pretty, it's hydrating. Just for some reason, I tend to reach for the House Labs more, and I'm in the shade 21 Light Medium. This is a little bit of, I don't wanna say thick, because it's not. It just, you know, there's no, how do I wanna explain this? I don't know, it's just a little bit more viscous. It's got some weight to it without being heavy on the under eye. Really wells, it really wells wear. <laughs> Y'all, it really wears well. Maybe I need to take a little like vacation. <laughs> it does wear well. It has really good coverage in my opinion. And I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I think that I haven't tried it. Well, let me take that back. I was about to say I haven't tried it on its own as a foundation. However, I have kind of spot concealed with this and used a powder foundation foundation on top. And I really like that on the face as well. So I think depending on what color you have, it could also work for an all over coverage product. Another product that I refilled on was my Ilia Soft Focus Powder. And I have since run out of the last one, so I'm glad I was able to pick this up with the 20% off. And this is just my powder of choice for the last quite a while to set my under eyes with. Now, before we set the face, I'm gonna be using the liquid blush that I got, cream blush, whatever you want to say. It's not powder, <laughs> and it's from the brand CL. And this is the Blush and Protect SPF 50 blush. Now, this is a brand new brand from Nikki DeRose, I believe. She is a makeup artist, a well-known makeup artist, and she brought out a brand where all of the products have SPF in them. I do not think I am getting any necessary coverage from a blush that I use two dots of, but it doesn't hurt. I got the shade Kirsty, and I really, really, really like this. This was a standout product to me from that haul. So I just take, it comes in a doe foot, and I just take two dots at the top of my cheeks on each side, because you're gonna see how far this goes. And I am using the BK Beauty, this is the Travel, but just the 101 brush. And I'm gonna start just kind of stippling it in where I applied it and then bring it down the cheek. Look at that, isn't it a pretty color? I honestly could probably get away with like one dot. This, if you got this, it would last you forever. But I really like this color. It's very easy to apply. Again, a standout from the entire haul. Now I am gonna use a powder from the same brand. And this is the CL Filter and Protect SPF 30 powder. It comes with a puff. I don't use that, but it has this little like trampoline sponge type of contraption in here and I just pick it up with my brush. I am in the shade, I think light. Yeah, number one. And you will wanna make sure you kinda get the right shade because the tint is a little evident. It's definitely not a translucent powder. I'm gonna try not to cover up too much of the blush. But I'm just gonna stipple that in. And you can see right off the bat that it does take some of that you know, hydrating shine down. This is definitely, the Hourglass Skin Tint is definitely a product that I personally would have to set every time I wear it because it is a bit tacky and I just envision it transferring a lot if I were to apply it and not set it with some kind of powder. I do like this powder. I do notice that it does definitely allow for the natural shine of your skin to come through. I don't necessarily know that I would recommend this to someone with super oily skin. I don't know that that's really the point of this powder. It's just to lightly set your makeup while also giving you a little bit of SPF. And all the SPF in the CL line is mineral SPF. I do feel like you have to be a little cognizant about how much you put on because it does appear a little thicker if you put too much on. So it's not the finest milled powder that I have in my collection. It's not something that I would necessarily touch up with, but if you are cognizant about how much you're putting on and really just do that like thin layer, then it is a pretty powder. Again, not something that's really gonna bump itself into my top five, but I'm not sad that I have it. I didn't haul this, but I did put it in my recommendations video. This is my Pat McGrath 
bronze without caution bronzer and this is in bronze dawn it's actually skin fetish divine bronzer there's lots of words on the back you know i get confused so this was definitely one of my recommendations and i believe even though it's not listed i'm almost positive this is the one i had on in my haul video i just checked and i'm very glad to say that this product is still available they did sell out of a couple of the shades within this but i hauled a second face palette from sephora it's a face trio face palette this is in the shade radiate i talked about how much i love these face palettes they are i guess being discontinued because they are on a deep sale for seven dollars and fifty cents which is a steal and again at the time i'm filming this video they are still or at least this actual shade is still available I'm not going to use the blush in this shade. However, I have used it separately and it's beautiful, but because I already have that CL on, I'm not going to use it, but I am going to mix the two highlight shades. And the reason I'm mixing is because this one is very, very highlighty. And as you can see, I don't need a ton. The hourglass and the blush, they really do lend to kind of a natural highlight anyways. So I'm just going to mix these two for my cheek highlight. You can see. It's a highlight, but it's so pretty. All these, I, I'm sad they're discontinuing these because, you know, Sephora brand is very hit and miss with me. I have tried some things that everybody loves that I still could not get on with. And then I have tried some things like this that I was just so overly impressed with and that I never hear anybody talk about. We'll come back to that for the eyes, which we're going to start right now. And I'm going to tell you these next two products that I'm talking about are by far my favorite products of the entire month of November. I use them over and over and over and over again. And I feel like every time I do, someone always comments on my eye makeup. It's one of the easiest looks, but it's so pretty. Can't recommend them enough. The first is the Patrick Daw, Patrick Daw Major Dimension number three matte eyeshadow palette. I mentioned in my haul video that I believe it was the first Patrick Ta palette that came out that I hauled and was not impressed with, but I remember the, one of the main reasons I wasn't impressed with it was because of the shimmer shades. I didn't love the formula of them, but I didn't mind the matte formula. When this came out, I was like, oh, well, I remember kind of liking the matte. Let's try it. Do I need it? Absolutely not. Am I so glad I got it? Absolutely, especially for this top row, which I have been just using on repeat. So it comes with two cream shadows right here under a plastic covering, and then 10 matte shadows in both cool and warm undertones. I'm gonna start out, let's see, do they have names? I believe it's called Needed, which is right, oh, backwards here. Probably my most used shade, and the one I had on in the haul video, for my crease when I tend to use this palette. It's just a very pretty warm brown. And I'm just gonna apply that into my crease with a refer number 16 brush. Blend beautifully. The color payoff is gorgeous without being too much or too little. It's kind of perfect in my opinion, even if you are a beginner. Then I'm going into this product, y'all. Here's the thing, I have another one, I believe it's social that I want. This is the Merit Solo Shadow. I have the color Vachetta, which is a pretty like mid-tone warmer brown. I really want social and it's been sold out on Merit and Sephora for a while now. I wasn't able to get it in either one of those sales, but it's definitely on my list. They just came out with a limited edition, which I now think is sold out, kind of kit for the holidays, which had like a, a lip liner that you can't get other than the kit and one of these that you can't get other than kit. Y'all, it was a shimmer one and it looked so beautiful, but I really wouldn't have used much else in the kit except for that. So I wasn't going to spend all that money just for that but i'm so hoping that they bring it out separately I, according to their instagram comments a lot of people hope that so i feel like it would be smart for them to do that because i think it would sell really well all that to say this is vachetta i love these so much they are a cream to powder formula and when i say these suckers don't move they don't move and you don't have a ton of time before they decide not to go anywhere so i'm just gonna lay this 
on my lid. This is, if you are a makeup minimalist, truly buy every color in these, use them as your eyeshadow every day by themselves, wash of color, put them up and blend them into your crease, put a little under the lash line, use a darker one for a liner. And I promise you, you're gonna be set for the entire day. I have come across very few cream or cream to powder shadows that have the longevity and the wherewithal that these shadows have. And they're just pretty. Y'all, they are just pretty. Again, if I am doing a look where I have no time, I will just put these on with a fluffy brush all up into my crease and I'm good to go. Especially this color with blue eyes, very, very pretty. Can you tell I like it? I really like it. Now I'm gonna go back into this Trio face palette and I'm gonna take this highlight shade right here, pop that on top of the Merit, just a little bit. This is just, this is my go-to way of doing eye makeup in the year of 2023. Crease color, some kind of base shade, whether it be a cream or even just a matte shadow to give a little bit of dimension, pop a shimmer on the top. Sometimes I do a liner, sometimes I don't. I am going to today because I want to show you how I use these cream shadows that are in this palette. To be quite honest, I don't typically love it when cream shadows are mixed in with powder shadows, even with the plastic sleeve. I don't know, I just don't love it. I don't mind it in this because <laughs> they're so good. I have not tried the black one yet, but I have used this brown a lot. And I just take a pencil brush, get the brown gel product on, and then just smudge it on my lash line. Smudge it up if I want it to be a little bit smokier. I can use a very detailed brush if I want it to be not smoky. Like if I were going to go into the black, I would probably use a more detailed brush to have more of a fine liner effect. But I just, they're just so easy. They're pigmented, but they're easy. Another, you know, product that stays put. And then I take a little bit of that same crease shade on the bottom of my eye to finish off the eye look. Before I do mascara, I'm gonna put on a little lips. I quite honestly don't remember what lip I was wearing in that video because I didn't have it listed. But as far as the lip that I have been reaching for the most in November, it has to go to the Beauty Counter Bare Shimmer Lip Gloss. I mean, you can even see, I don't feel like I've had this that long, at least this particular one, and you can already see the use out of this tube. It's probably my favorite. This and the Wayne Goss Tulip Lip Gloss are my favorite nude lipsticks or lip glosses. The Tulip is more of like a beigey nude, creamy nude. This has some pink to it. And I just find myself reaching for it a lot. For mascara, in that video, I had on one that I hauled during the sale, which is one that I have used before and knew I loved, and it's the Tower 28 mascara. This is fabulous, y'all. It's really, really nice. It is a tubing mascara. It has kind of a spikier bristle wand, which is not always my favorite, but it works for this. I feel like I get more length from this than I do volume, which you'll see in the after. It stays put all day. I don't ever have any flaking. It's easy to remove. I forgot how much I loved it, but was quickly reminded the first time I used it once I hauled it. So I'm gonna do that off camera. I'll be right back. All right, so two coat, two, two, yeah. I just can't speak. Rewind. <laughs> Two coats of the Tower 28 mascara. So if you can see, I again, I just feel like it gives more length than volume, but it gives a lot of length and I'm okay with it. With the first time that I put it on after I hauled it, so I hadn't used it in over a year, I got ready. I went out to the kitchen and AC was like, did you put on false lashes? And I'm like, no girl, that's the power of the Tower 28 mascara. <laughs> Very, very good, highly recommend. So that is the finished look. I've really been liking slash loving all of these products, but again, the standouts to me are the Patrick Ta, the Merit Shadow, the Blush, the Lip Gloss, and the Trio Face Palette. Those are the ones that I feel like I've been reaching for the most. 
but I did want to give you an update on all of the things that I hauled in the Sephora sale. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will have everything listed and linked down below in the description box. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.